Hello, my name is Kimberly Guerrera, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Emerge Ortho. I'm joined today by Dr. Nicholas Viens, orthopedic surgeon specializing in the foot and ankle. Today, we're going to be talking about ankle sprains and some of the most common questions that he receives from his patients. So first off, Dr. Viens, tell us what you enjoy most about treating ankle sprains. Yeah, thanks, Kimberly. So yeah, I really love uh, treating ankle sprains, a lot of it because there's basically no type of patient I don't get to interact with treating mm -hmm. ankle sprains. Um, from young kids who are playing weekend soccer to older patients with arthritis um, or construction workers or you know, anybody coming down the stairs at their house. Um, so a wide variety of athletes, non-athletes, every age you can, you can imagine. Um, a lot of it also I really enjoy is because I feel like a lot of patients are under treated mm -hmm. for them. Um, so I think it's a really good opportunity to not only help them with that acute injury, but help try to prevent future injuries and uh, the, or the future potential problems and, and really help educate the patients um, and their family members about ankle sprains. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's start off with our first question. So what specifically is an ankle sprain? Yeah. So an ankle sprain is a ligament tear. So that's what every sprain in the body is, whether it's in your, in your knee or your shoulder. Um, so it's a ligament tear. So typically the most common ones we're thinking about would be a lateral ankle sprain. Um, so the lateral ankle ligaments on the outside part of your ankle. Uh, and the most common being the anterior talofibular ligament, or sometimes it, people say the ATFL. Mm -hmm. um, so that's usually what we're talking about, but sometimes it can involve um, ligaments on the inside of the ankle, the deltoid ligament is what that's called, or a high ankle sprain, which is usually referring to something called the syndesmosis, which is a connection between the two bones in the leg at the ankle, the fibula and the tibia. And sometimes patients have all of those all together. Oh, wow. um, so, and, and certainly the, the way you treat it can change depending on which ligaments are, are injured. Awesome. Okay. So tell me about the different types of ankle sprains that you see. Yeah. So, the, the big thing I think about is really which, which ligaments do I think are injured? Um, do I think there's a component of a high ankle sprain or a deltoid sprain? Does the ankle feel unstable or not? That's really the biggest thing for me. Uh, I don't focus so much on grade one, grade two, grade three. I, I really think about, okay, which ligaments are injured and does their ankle feel unstable? Sometimes you can't really tell that acutely because the patient's in too much pain or it's hugely swollen, in which case um, it's likely going to be a severe ankle sprain and probably unstable. But unstable doesn't always end up meaning surgery or, or anything like that. We'll get to that later, I'm sure. But, um, you know, that's really kind of the, the types of ankle sprains is where is the sprain? Where is the injury? Is it a sprain by itself or is there a fracture uh, component where a, the patient also has a broken bone? Is there been a cartilage injury um, or uh, are there multiple ligaments injured? And, and, uh, and we kind of go from there. Gotcha. So how would you diagnose an ankle sprain? Well, the biggest thing is physical exam um, and, and just talking to the patient. Uh, you really can get a good idea if somebody sprained their ankle just hearing that, hearing what they did. Um, but physical exam is really how you would tell does the ankle feel unstable or not. Uh, you don't you don't need an MRI to tell if somebody had an ankle sprain. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes we do get MRIs when we're when we're working it up uh, down the road. Uh, X-rays usually are going to be part of that. Uh, evaluation the first time in clinic because, like I said, um, patients can have fractures that go along with the sprain. Um, sometimes it's where the patient sort of tears part of the ligaments off of the bone where it attaches or 
or sometimes you can break a little piece of a little process off of a bone along with the ankle sprain or there's actually many injuries that actually fake people out and make um, providers think that you had an ankle sprain it really wasn't an ankle sprain at all it was actually a uh, fracture or um, something else so so uh, x-rays are definitely helpful occasionally ct scan and mri depending on specific situations um, but again the biggest thing is just going to be that history and physical exam gotcha okay so if i were to come in with an ankle sprain what are my non-operative treatments and options and what are my operative treatment options right so again it's going to sort of depend on how bad is it so if if someone has a hugely swollen ankle um, hard to put any weight on it usually we'll just sort of try to calm that down and um, immobilize it and, and protect it so that can range anything from a splint which is sort of like a cast um, but allows for swelling and uh, all the way to a boot um, which people often have seen people walking around you know it's got little air pumps on it and yes and, uh, <laughs> So you get the boot. So, but sometimes it doesn't need all that and, and we can treat it with um, things as simple as just an ACE wrap or even a compression sock um, and icing it or a, a lace up kind of ankle brace, the kind that people have often seen uh, people wear playing basketball or volleyball, that sort mm -hmm. of thing can, can be helpful. Um, so that's sort of the, the first step um, and again, helping to determine does the ankle feel unstable or not. So if the ankle's unstable and we don't do anything about it, and not only will it potentially hurt, but those ligaments which have been torn or, or minimally stretched, if, if they're able to keep going like this and, and you're not helping them to heal in a tight position, then the patients can end up with stretched out ankle ligaments. And, and I, I kind of describe it to patients like rubber bands. Um, you know, we want it to get tight at first or to heal. We can we can get your motion back and and um, kind of stretch it out if it gets a little too tight. But if it ends up healing loose, it's sort of like a floppy rubber band and, and it's not a whole lot of good. You can't really tighten it up once it's loose. Right. At least not very easily um, without surgery. Um, not always true, but that's sort of an easy way to think about it. Um, but then once once we've kind of gotten over that initial very inflamed stage, um, if patients are able to let me kind of pull on their ankle and examine it a little more, um, you know, we, they might be ready to start coming out of their boot or, or go from a, a splint to a boot and start physical therapy. I mean, the physical therapy part is really critical to successful, um, treatment of an ankle sprain and and often that can be just exercises on on your own at home to try to work on getting balance and motion uh, and strength back early. Um, but oftentimes like formal physical therapy seeing a physical therapist even if it's just a time or two really can kind of take it to that next level that you can um, get back doing all the things you want to do but ankle sprains are are bad injuries. The thing I hate hearing is, oh, it's just an ankle sprain. And ankle mm -hmm. sprains, not only are they one of the most, if not the most common injuries that people have across the board, um, but they they can cause pretty significant issues, not infrequently, uh, depending on what, what you read, uh, what study, what patient population. I mean, anywhere from 10 to even 40% I've seen in some studies patients can have problems down the road after a, after a bad ankle sprain. Wow. Okay. So my next question, when can I return to my normal day-to-day -day routine from an ankle sprain? Yeah. So again, it depends on how bad it was. I mean, I have some patients who, you know, they, they sprain their ankle and, and their back playing sports or whatever it is that they like to do in, in a day or two. I mean, some people don't really even miss a beat and they, they roll their ankle and maybe it's a little sore for an hour or two and, and they're fine mm -hmm. same day. 
Um, but some patients really don't ever get back fully to their normal activities without doing other things to help it. Uh, and, and that can include uh, surgery to sort of rebuild the ankle ligaments, um, things like that. So it depends. Uh, it depends on also what your normal activity is. So if you're trying to walk around to the grocery store, that's different than trying to play collegiate basketball. Um, Definitely. <laughs> or, you know, being an active duty military or a mm -hmm. firefighter. Um, it all just depends on what kinds of things you're trying to do. How much uneven ground do you have to walk on? Because um, that's really where it can be very difficult is uneven ground where you're just setting yourself up for recurrent injuries. Um, and sometimes it's not even recurrent injuries that are painful. It's just the ankles continuing to give out and the patients will uh, step on a little pebble or an acorn and down they go. And, and that can be functionally obviously very limiting um, and unsettling. You know, you, they just never really know, am I about to fall at any time? And, um, and then that's kind of where we end up talking about the treatments for chronic ankle sprains and instability and what do you do about it? Kind of the next step, not so much the, the first time ankle sprain patient. Definitely. Well, in the future, what can I do to prevent an ankle sprain? Well, the biggest thing is if you've had an ankle sprain in the first place is, is getting it checked out and, and really making sure that it wasn't more than an ankle sprain. So, uh, you didn't have a, a subtle fracture that can go on to cause chronic problems, um, that you do your exercises that uh, either the therapist or we kind of help direct you to, um, to do those. Um, and then you just being careful, uh, you know, there's no brace, there's no taping, there's no shoe, there's no one specific exercise that will prevent it completely. Um, you know, if there was, certainly all these pro athletes would be doing that and they would never sprain their ankle. And we know Absolutely. that they do all the time. And there's several big time athletes have missed playoff games or major championships because of an ankle sprain. So ankle sprains can be bad. So, um, the, but those are the things that you can do to kind of decrease your risk of recurrent ankle sprains. Um, but sometimes you end up in that situation anyway, even if you did everything right from day one. Um, and, and then we end up having a conversation about how do you deal with that? Um, and, and, the, and what does that mean down the road and recovery wise? Right. Okay. Well, that was great. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Beans. You're welcome. If you viewers would like to learn more about Dr. Beans, I am going to link his bio in the description below. And you can also use that link to request an appointment with him. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Thanks.